Hi, my name is Dominic Palazzolo and I'm the owner of Marvelous Molds. And in this video, which we've titled Troubleshooting with Onlays, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a step-by-step -step process and cover all of the little details and things that you should know so that you can use an onlay with confidence and create great designs on your cake. Tylos, also known as CMC, is available at any store that provides cake decorating supplies. Use Tylos to condition your fondant before working with silicone onlays. I sprinkle about a half a teaspoon onto my work surface and I incorporate that into about a pound of fondant. I'm using blue fondant here to show you how easily you can knead the tylos into the fondant. Once you've kneaded it into the fondant, it's important to let it rest for about a half an hour. Then check your fondant to see if it's firmer and less sticky so that it'll work very well with a silicone onlay. If you need to add more, add a quarter of a teaspoon at a time until you achieve a stiffer fondant that is not so tacky. It's very important that you use some type of sheeter when rolling out your conditioned fondant. Here at Marvelous Molds, we sell a great sheeter that's very wide and it has Teflon rollers and it works very well. I like to run my fondant through this sheeter until I get to a number four setting and then it's the exact thickness for use with a silicone onlay. Now, if you have a KitchenAid machine, I would set it or roll it to a number three on a KitchenAid and that also works very well. So it's very easy just to run the fondant right through the sheeter and just step it down from one to two to three to four and you'll get this great thickness. If you think you can roll this out by hand, I caution you, a sheeter does a much better job and you'll have a lot more success with a silicone onlay if you would use something as simple as a pasta machine. The pasta machine that we sell also has a motorized attachment. This can be very convenient for those of you who have a high volume operation or just want the convenience of a motorized attachment. It works really great and it does the same job with a lot less effort and you just run it through and what I'm going to do now is simply sheet the fondant to a number four setting and what I do is I run it through a number four setting twice just to ensure that I have the proper thickness. If you're starting with a new silicone onlay, I like to season it with a lot of cornstarch. So what I do is I apply a lot of it and then I just kind of tap it around, but I want to remove the excess. My goal is to have about a one molecule thick coating on the silicone onlay. Once the silicone onlay has been dusted with cornstarch, I put a light coating on the top of my fondant and then what I do is I put that side down onto the silicone onlay and press down lightly with my fingertips. You should see the bladed design coming through almost immediately when you do this. This is a very good sign that you have rolled the fondant to the proper thickness. When I introduced the silicone onlay two years ago, I would use a rolling pin in order to push the fondant down even more into the onlay. But now I recommend that you take a fondant smoother and start pressing more in order to push the fondant into the bladed design. Once you've done that, 
Take the fondant smoother and press down, giving it a quarter turn. You should see solid lines. These are the tips of the silicone onlay blades coming through from underneath the fondant. These lines will appear almost immediately, and that's another good sign that you have sheeted the fondant to the proper thickness. A fondant smoother enables you to work in certain areas that need a little extra attention so that you can create an unbroken linear representation of the design of the onlay. Now at this point, if you want to, you can take a rolling pin and roll over it lightly or use it as a screed and kind of go back and forth in order to develop your blade pattern even more. It's important to note here that the fondant should be very level with the top of the silicone blades. What we're looking for here is, is the fondant cupping, which means that it's indented, and that's an indication that your fondant may be rolled a little too thin. If you find that your fondant is bulging in between the blade designs, that's an indication that you've rolled your fondant too thick. When you see these signs, it's best if you go back and find the proper setting on your sheeter. I am applying an edible glue to my silicone onlay made by combining three parts of corn syrup to one part of water. I like to apply my glue to the entire onlay before I remove any fondant. Trust me when I tell you that this is going to enable you to remove fondant from the silicone onlay very easily and quickly. If we were to remove fondant and then apply the glue, you would have to use a micro brush in order to paint very thin details, and it really kind of interferes with the speed and accuracy of the onlay. So I'm removing the excess around the onlay, and now what I'm going to do is just look at the surface and make sure that everything has been coated well. Now, I'm deciding to remove the centers on this Moroccan lattice silicone onlay because people like to see the lattice on a cake, but you can definitely apply the centers by removing the lattice. The glue melts little sugar bridges, and you'll find that removing the fondant that you do not want to apply on the cake is very, very easy at this point. What you want to do is just use a needle tool and press into the pieces, as you see me doing here, and you can see that it's a very, very easy process. Don't think that the fondant that is coated with glue that you're not going to use on the cake is unusable and you have to throw it away. Knead it back into your fondant and it will just be fine. You do not have to throw it away. And this is a very precise, efficient way of using the silicone onlay. Now that we've applied edible glue to the fondant in the silicone onlay, remember that this onlay is made out of silicone, and I like to stretch it in many different directions to loosen the fondant design in the onlay. This incorporates a small layer of air on the underside, which is greatly going to assist you in transferring the design to the side of a cake. I also like to grab the silicone onlay where there is no fondant, and while stretching, I rub my fingers underneath. This really pops the fondant out of the silicone onlay, and I concentrate on the perimeter because the perimeter is very important when applying it to the cake. You want to make sure that that is transferring well. Even though I've loosened the fondant in the silicone onlay, I can still pick it up and the fondant will not fall out of the silicone onlay. 
Now, let's take a cake where I've already added some panels from a silicone onlay. Notice that the bottom of a silicone onlay has no flange or frame around it. Use the bottom of the silicone onlay to keep it level on your work surface and then just bring one side of the silicone onlay and kind of park it right next to the panel already applied to the cake. Again, just one side and then without stretching, place the silicone onlay around and against the side of the cake and rub lightly with your hand. What we're trying to do here is we want maximum contact between the glued fondant and the surface of the cake. I like to really concentrate on the perimeter and just rub it gently against a cake to encourage complete contact. You can use a fondant smoother and I like to rub it with a little cornstarch and then just use the fondant smoother like I did with my hand. That's a nice strategy. Now take the leading edge of your silicone onlay and pull it off quickly and you will find that if you followed my steps, it'll transfer very easily and perfectly. You're always going to have a little gap between one panel and the next, and while the fondant is fresh, press the two edges together so that they meet and you have an unbroken design all around the side of your cake. As you can see, we have a gap on the cake. What I like to do is I like to take an empty onlay and lay it over the gap to see if there's a part of the design that I can incorporate in order to fill that gap. So what I've decided is I'm just going to use this section of the onlay in order to fill the empty gap that remains on the cake. So, it's really easy. Remember now, we're going to only fill just this portion of the silicone onlay. So I'm going to put my silicone onlay on top of some sheeted fondant and I'm just going to make some marks to indicate how wide a strip I need in order to fill this section of the silicone onlay. So now that I've cut the strip to the width I need, I just lay it on top of the silicone onlay and proceed in the same method that I would use with any onlay, just pressing it down into the onlay, applying glue, removing the fondant pieces that I don't want to put on the cake. It's all really the same drill. So. Here you see that what I've got now is just one section of the silicone onlay and I'm just going to loosen it like I normally would. I've already applied the glue and now what we're going to do is just line it up over the gap of our cake and proceed like we would with a silicone onlay in any other application. We're just going to press it up against the cake, just rub lightly, and remove the onlay and as you can see we filled the gap perfectly. Remember to press the fresh fondant edges together to close the blade gap and you should end up with something that looks very uniform and very perfect. The silicone onlay was designed with a four inch height and that is basically for cakes that we make in the United States. But in other places in the world, they make cakes that are not quite as high. For instance, in the UK, they make cakes that are about three inches high. So in order to use an onlay for a three inch tall cake, all you have to do is basically cut a piece of fondant only three inches wide and put it onto your silicone onlay and proceed just like you would with any other onlay application. 
the method and all the principles remain the same, you're just filling three inches of the silicone onlay. So, as you can see here, I'm simply pressing with my fondant smoother. And then what I'm going to do is apply my edible glue. And then I'm going to be removing the excess and the fondant that I do not want to apply to a cake. Now you might think that because we didn't use the whole design of the silicone onlay that it might look a little odd. But actually, anywhere that you stop or partially fill the silicone onlay, you're always going to get a very uniform, pretty edge that's going to look attractive on a cake. So I'm stretching my silicone onlay as I normally would. And now what I'm going to do is take a four inch cake and let's go ahead and put this three inch tall design onto the cake. Again, simply apply one side, bring it around without stretching, rub it with your hand or a fondant smoother. Make sure that you're really taking care of the perimeter. And as you can see, the onlay does a very good job, no matter how much of it you use. Now I put this on a four inch cake just to show you that sometimes adding a three inch design or a partial design to a cake like a border or maybe two thirds up the side of a cake can be very, very attractive. I have here a medium chevron silicone onlay and I've loaded it with a pink fondant. Now what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that I loosen it by stretching it. And you really want to make sure that the divisions between the chevrons are really, really separated. Now we're not going to glue this. What we're going to do is instead of gluing it, we're just going to turn it over and unmold it. And so we're just going to take it out of the medium chevron silicone onlay. And now what we've done is just reloaded the silicone onlay with a different color. In this case, I'm using blue. So the idea here is we are going to be removing every other blue chevron strip and replacing it with the pink chevron strip. Every chevron strip that you see in the silicone onlay is exactly the same size, so they can be interchanged perfectly. So we just proceed through this process and make the substitutions, putting our pink fondant in with the blue in order to create this multicolored application. You can use the remaining strips in order to make more panels to put on the cake. So they're perfectly cut and can be used. Now what I'm doing, it's the same drill now. Basically, I'm going to be applying my edible glue. And once that's done, we're simply going to line it up on the cake, one side only, and then bringing the silicone onlay around and pressing lightly, concentrating on the perimeters. It's basically the same as using any silicone onlay application at this point. And now we're going to peel and reveal a beautiful multicolored medium chevron application. This can be done with many other silicone onlays using the same method that we showed here. A silicone onlay can be used to apply a decorative pattern to a buttercream cake. What's important to know is that you should either refrigerate the cake in order to make it firm or to allow the cake or the buttercream on the cake to develop a skin. Once that's happened, 
it's easy then to follow the standard process of using a silicone onlay just as I've shown you in order to put it on the cake and get a great design where we're making something that is covered with buttercream and decorated with fondant. Using fondant and decorating a buttercream iced cake is something that I call a hybrid cake and you can use this effectively with customers, friends, and relatives who may not really like to eat a fondant covered cake. So the question is why are these funny shapes on my silicone onlay? Now I'm showing you our original onlay which is not clear and you can see that there's these funny little lines that don't necessarily represent a part of the pattern. Now I have our new silicone onlays which are clear and as you can see the bumpers still remain in the pattern. These bumpers line up with a previous panel and help you to achieve proper spacing from one silicone onlay application to another. So what you do is basically use that as a guide and now you can see that one bumper is wrapping around this splash design right there and what it does is it just hugs right up against these designs and this is a guide for you so that when you remove the silicone onlay it is perfectly spaced and you would never be able to tell where you stopped in the application of these designs around the side of your cake. Now let's look at another silicone onlay. This is the Bird in Blossom and I have a bumper down here in this corner and up here and let's see how these bumpers line up with a previously applied Bird in Blossom design. So this little corner actually lines up with the branch on the panel already applied and you can see that the top bumper goes around the edge of the flower. Once you have these lined up, you can go ahead and apply the silicone onlay to the side of the cake knowing that the spacing is going to be absolutely perfect. As you can see here, as I remove the onlay, the placement is perfect. Even though it's a very organic shape, we've got beautiful spacing. So use the bumpers to help you place your silicone onlays onto the side of a cake perfectly every time. Now there's another part of a silicone onlay and what they appear to be are these funny little openings. And a lot of people have asked me, well, what are those for? We actually call these windows. And we use this on a silicone onlay that does not have bumpers. And as you can see, the windows line up with the very edge of the design. And what I have here is a scalloped lattice onlay. Now there's no bumpers on this silicone onlay. And so what we do is we provide you with these windows so that you can look through the opening, through this window, in order to line up your pattern with the previous panel applied to the cake. And it helps you achieve perfect alignment knowing that that window corresponds to the edge of the blade. As always, press the two edges together to close the blade gap that exists between two applications. Well, that's about it for our video troubleshooting with onlays. I hope that I answered a lot of your questions and that you learned a lot. And if you did, I'd like to invite you to join our YouTube channel. That way, when we come out with more videos, you'll be the first to receive them right in your inbox. 
And when you go over to Marvelous Molds, join our newsletter because not only will you find out about new videos, but you'll be finding out about new products. We have promotions, sales, discounts, all kinds of things that you can benefit from. So join our YouTube channel, join our newsletter at MarvelousMolds.com and I'll be seeing you in the near future with another interesting video. Thank you for watching.